I'm back. Hmm. So this is the last time that we meet. Unless in the lobby or at the reception. It has been such a joy to get to know you today, to share some music with you, to share some thoughts with you, to all the speakers, to listen to you, uh, to investigate play and possibility and pleasure and and paradox. I have absolutely nothing to say <laughs> about paradox. Actually, that's not true. Um, I don't know. Have you ever had this happen to you? You're, you're just being, as we all do, and you're thinking, and like this sort of fundamental truth comes to you about your current situation, something that you're engaged in, something that's happening, and you're like, ah, yes, I understand that. And just as soon as that happens to you, this other thought comes rushing in right behind it, which is the exact opposite way of looking at the problem. But you have to acknowledge that it's equally possible and equally true. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. Right. Now, this happens to me probably, you know, quite a bit, I'd say, weekly, monthly, at least. And every single time that it happens, I say, I'm going to remember this one so that I can have a list when I hit TEDx Navisync to illustrate my point. And I have completely failed. So in any case, that whole thing of where, you know, the black is the, the black and the white are no longer black and they're gray and they sort of dance together, those two opposite viewpoints. I always tell my students, you know, you want to talk about truth? The truth is to be found right here, where two apparently completely opposite things coexist and dance together for you. There is your truth. So I guess that's my experience with paradox. So I love it every time that that happens in my brain, every time that I hear from two op opposing points of view and I sort of find the middle ground between any inside of any conflict of thought or of people. It's, uh, that's a really rewarding experience. I so hope you've enjoyed your day today. I have really enjoyed my day today with you. I'm going to play for you one last time uh, some music. Anybody have any questions? I mean, does anybody have any desire to sort of know how this all works back here? Or do you sort of get it? Or anybody interested in this? Yeah? OK. All right. I'm, you know, as a, as a childhood magician, I know I'm not supposed to share my secrets, but, um, but let me, let me just, uh, I can't really show you this, that's a little too hard, but what I can show you sort of in, just to give you a little idea, obviously I've got some things here that are, that are, um, oh. I have some things here which are controlling different things, right? So in my computer, I'm actually using a program that was developed a number of years ago. We're now in version nine. It's by a, a German, com German company called Ableton. It's called Ableton Live. And it is sort of the godsend to musicians that perform live. I always said to myself when I was young, and I was like young in college 25 years ago, that, uh, that I said, someday all this stuff I want to do will most surely be able to be handled in a laptop, and that happened. And then we use, um, then we use all these things. I have a, a very small little pedal called a soft step that just has 10 buttons on it. But they're buttons that can do different things, like I can stand down on it and then change whether my sound is affected or not. Things like that. And the most important thing is I use a, another program called Mobius, which is free like free software from a place called circularlabs.com. Some guy named Jeff Larson decided he wanted to write this, and it allows me to record myself in real time. So essentially, I can press a button like this, and then press it again. Actually, I have to see it to be able to, ah, oh, there it is. I can actually press a button and then record something that I'm playing. And then I can even record inside that very same one.
right? And I've got eight tracks of those to play with, right? So I can move to another one. And this one sounds different. And I can even record it again, but then I can just sort of put it in reverse. Right? Or, or what did you say? You wanted to hear it down an octave? So everything from really blatant things to very subtle things can be done by this act of what we call looping. There are lots of looping artists. You've seen plenty of them on the TED circuit, believe me. And uh, this is sort of our practice. And what it allows for is it allows us to actually compose entire pieces in real time, which is what I've endeavored to do for you a couple times today and will endeavor to do for you now. So. Um, I'll see you in the bar for a beer. <laughs>
Thank you.